Today we're going to start section 2.1. We're going to take a look at symbols and terminology. Um, so at the beginning of many of our sections of material, you're going to feel like it's a lot of definitions. Um, and um, that's okay because we have to make sure that we're all talking about the same thing. Um, but in terms of homework questions and so forth, quiz questions, I'm not asking you to define anything or anything like that. It's all worked out problems. So this is just establishing a baseline for all of us to be on. Um, so the first one is we're going to talk about um, in this whole chapter what sets are. Uh, and a set is really just a collection of objects. And elements are those objects. So we can talk about the set of people in contemporary math right now in this classroom. Uh, we can talk about um, the set of uh, music um, albums on my playlist. Right? We can talk about the set of math textbooks in my office. It's just a collection of something. And it can be people or it can be objects. It doesn't matter. Um, there's several ways to describe a set. And these are three of them. Word descriptions, so I've kind of given you some word descriptions already. Um, there's set builder notation. We see this used extensively inside of mathematics. And listing method, and listing method actually lists the items that we're talking about that are in the set. So let me give you an example of each of these. Um, and it's going to be the same example, but just represented in three different ways. Okay? So we could use a word description, and we could say something like, so this is my example, All whole numbers I hope that's supposed to say less less than seven. We're going to talk more about all the different types of numbers later. That's not the point of this question. Um, set builder notation would look like this. It starts with a curly brace. It uses a variable. X is what's used often. There's nothing special about it. It's just what's used. There's a vertical bar that's given. Actually, let me make this a little bit smaller because I'm going to write it two different ways in set builder. So there's a vertical bar drawn. And then one option after the vertical bar is much like the word description, and it just says it right there. So it says X is a whole number. less than seven. So that's an option. That's actually set builder notation. Um, the one we see used more frequently in set builder notation looks like this. It still has the curly brace, still has the X, and still has the bar. And it uses symbols to say X is less than seven. So the symbol to say X is less than seven looks like that. You can't just say x is less than 7, though, because that would include things like 6.5, and 6.5 and and is not a whole number. It would also include things like negative 4, and negative 4 is not a whole number. So we still have to include the fact that we're talking about whole numbers in here, and so we can say x is a whole number. So in mathematics, we like to condense things down a lot of times. So we kind of like this second one that I wrote a little bit better than the first one. And in fact, there's actually a one better, one better. There is another way to write that that's slightly better too, but we don't have quite all of the symbols that we need yet. So we'll come back to this example in a little bit and I'll show you that. The third way, however, is the listing method. And the listing method is very friendly when the list is short. <laughs> Um, right? If I were to list all of you guys' names out um, on a list, it would take me a while, right? If I were to have to write out all the numbers that are less than 100, that would take me a while. It's not, it's not especially helpful. But it's doable. We can do it, but, but it's not helpful. So some lists are more helpful in this way than others. So the listing method to say things like this. So whole numbers, if you're not remembering, do start with zero. And then they're positive. So one, two, three, four, five. Six. Do I get to include seven? No, because it says less than seven. Now, it could say less than or equal to, and if it did, we would include seven, right? This one just doesn't. So this is the listing method. For this example, the nicest notation 
of the three is the listing method, because the list is short. Simple, easy to write, yeah? Yeah. All right, another bit of vocabulary is the null set. The empty or null set is the set containing no elements. So we can talk about null set ideas, um, examples of them. For example, I will give you a null set that I can talk about in my life. This is the set of infants living in my home. I don't have any. This is a null set. You could say the same thing and put living in my dorm room, and it would be true for you too, right? Null set just means it's describing something that has no items in it. Um, it does have a symbol. The symbol for null set is either a zero with a line through it. So if you are in the habit of writing your zeros with line through it, please stop. I know, I'm sorry. Some of you are like, man, I do that all the time. The zero with the line through it has another meaning. It means null set. It actually has more meanings than that. It also means no solution in an algebra situation. But for us, it means null set. There's also a symbol that looks like the curly braces with nothing in them. It's a very intuitive kind of a symbol, right? So both of these mean null set. It is important to write this down, and every time I write something down that's wrong, I just hesitate because I want to make sure you mark it out here in just a second. This, we'll do it in a different color even. Combining them, not okay. Big fat no. Cannot put the empty set inside of the curly braces. It's one or the other, not combined. So don't, don't do this. Okay, so um, we're going to do a couple examples next. Um, so these are more like what your homework would be like, right? This is, these are examples that you'll see things like. Um, we're going to list the elements in each set using set notation. Um, set notation is talking about the curly braces. Notice that's not set builder notation. Set builder notation is the ones that have the X and the line and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so it's just a set notation. just means curly braces. So it says use set notation and the listing method to describe the set. So this one says the set of whole numbers greater than 8 and less than 18. So literally what we're doing is we're writing a curly brace. And we're going to list the numbers that are included in that set. So what's the first number if we're going sort of in order from smallest to largest? Nine. And then 10. And where will I stop? 17. Yep, 17. Um, the other one almost looks like it's already in set notation, right? I've got the curly braces, I've got these numbers, but what it's wanting you to do really is to just fill in the dot, dot, dots. Uh, use caution when my math lab asks you this question. Sometimes it tells you just write the piece that's missing. Sometimes it tells you to complete the whole list. So just be careful for the direction set. We're going to write the whole list because of the way the directions say this here. So we're going to start with 2 and 4 and 6. And what kinds of numbers are these? Even. They're evens, right? So 8... 10, oops, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, and 22. Now, it doesn't ask in these two questions for us to do set builder notation, but I'd like to show you what they look like because you will have questions that ask for the set builder notation. So I'll put that in a different color. Um, it's the ones I'm going to do in yellow. So if I were to do the first one in set builder notation, I'd start out with the curly brace like I already did. I'd write an X in a bar. This means X such that. X such that. Well, you can write it one of two ways. You could do 9 is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to 17. Or you could do 8 is less than X is less than 18. It doesn't matter. They're both correct. And then you need to make sure that you're telling this that you don't want like the decimals and the fraction parts of these, right? You just want the whole numbers. 
So you have to say x is a whole number. So if you were asked to do set builder notation, it looked like that. This second one down here, right? <coughs> we would say x such that. Um, and again, we can do the same listing like we did before, 2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 22. Or you could use like 1 and 23, it doesn't matter. But this time, we need to make sure that we're not just saying x is a whole number. What kind of numbers did you tell me it was? Even. even. So we have to say x is even. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes, Ian. Yeah, um, so it is implied. Um, a whole number, or I'm sorry, an even number is considered whole. So whenever we talk about something being even, we're talking about it being whole. Yeah. All right. This is another one with set builder notation. These you could do either way. Like I was able to write a list of numbers, right? Like it's possible to do that. It's not always possible. And this is an example of one that's not possible. This one doesn't talk about whole numbers. It talks about rational numbers. What are rational numbers? Again, we're going to talk more about our numbers later. But rational numbers are like decimals and the fractions. And there's no way to write them all out. There's just not. If we were convinced that we were only talking about money, we could do that. But as soon as you incorporate the idea that you could have three decimal places or four decimal places, you lose the ability to write everything out. So it's not always possible to do listing method. So this is an example of one that is not. So here's what this would look like. We're going to do the curly brace, and we're going to do the x and the such that. And we're going to say x is rational. Does not mean it thinks clearly. Just, you know. All right. We're going to come back to this example. Actually, we're going to come back to several of these examples and show you an alternate form of things you can do because we're about to incorporate a little bit more um, symbol technology to be able to use. All right. So we're going to talk about sets of numbers next. There are other numbers than the ones I'm mentioning. These are simply the ones that we're going to encounter in this section. Natural or counting numbers whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, real numbers, and irrational numbers. And as we create this um, definition structure, we're going to create a diagram. You have more space than I do, but we'll still work with it. So you're going to create a rectangle over here in the side like this, big old giant rectangle, okay? The bigger the better, kind of, because you're going to have several things you're going to write inside of it. Once you create your rectangle, I need you to divide your rectangle into two pieces. It doesn't need to be like perfectly in half. It's not representing size, it's just representing categories. So I'm gonna divide mine like this. And this big box are the real numbers. Now real numbers can be categorized in, in lots of ways, in particular the ways that are listed here. We're gonna start with um, the biggest, or sorry, the, the smallest concept of numbers at the very front, the very top, which says natural or counting numbers. So if any of you have been around small children lately, or just remember back to when you were a small child, when you first learned to count, what did you start with? One. So it didn't start with zero, and you didn't start with 0.5, right? You started with one. Those are the natural numbers. So the natural numbers, the symbol for natural numbers is an N with two lines on the left. And it's sort of our starting place for talking about numbers. And it's this tiny little box, and it does need to be pretty small because we're going to draw some boxes around it, OK? Actually, no, I don't, yeah. And this box right here represents the natural numbers. And those are the numbers like 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 right? They're natural numbers. Very quickly, in kindergarten-ish, kids start doing things where they represent something that has no value, and it's the number zero. And so you need an additional symbol to represent that. 
And once you include the zero, you've included or you've created a number system that's got whole numbers. They're called whole numbers. It includes all the numbers we had before and zero. So it's not drastically different than the whole numbers, but it's slightly different. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a box around the in box. I'm going to draw it a little bit lopsided so I've got space to write in it and label it as the whole numbers. Um, in, when I write in written form, when you write in written form, I do this double line business. Sometimes you'll see in print form, they just bold that side of the letter. Like they don't write the double line, they just make it bold, just so you're aware. So this includes zero and up. Let me move this up a little bit. So you've got zero, one, two, three, and so on. And if we expand our universe just a little bit more, we end up with integers. So within our integers, we're going to draw another box around the whole numbers. Do you know what we get to include with integers that we did not have before? Negative numbers, right. So integers um, is not i, by the way. I know natural was n and whole was w. Integers is actually z. Whoa. And they do the double line in the middle. can't remember if it comes from Greek or Latin, but it has to do with that letter being used for integers in that language. So <coughs> we use z. And like you mentioned, it includes the positives and negatives. So I'm going to put dot, dot, dot at the beginning and then put negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and then I continue on to 1 and 2 and so forth. Okay, so um, let me just put dot, dot, dot at the end there because I'm out of space. Okay, it continues, right? Um, the next type of number that we're going to look at are called rational numbers. Um, I mentioned those earlier. Rational numbers actually has the letter Q. You know, not R. Sorry. Letter Q. Uh, the letter Q comes from the word quotient. What does quotient mean to you? Division. And, and so what it lends us to is this idea of fractions and decimals. So when we see Q, it's for quotient, for division. We've got rational numbers. With fra it's fractions and decimals. So out here in this circle is Q, or not circle, square. And we'll put in examples. I can't write them all out. I mentioned that on the previous uh, example itself slide. But you have things like 0.5. And um, you have things like uh, 4 thirds. Now, all the numbers inside are still rational numbers, right? So the integers and the whole numbers, the natural, they're, whole, they're rational as well. Okay, rational just means I can write it in a fraction form, right? So if I have the number 3, I can write it as 3 over 1. That's a ratio. It's a rational number. Okay, it's not a very exciting one, you know, but it is one. So we have things like 0.5. Um, we have 4 thirds. Um, we can even have 4 thirds is a repeating decimal, but I'll write one in repeating decimal form, like 0.7 repeating. Okay, all those things are rational numbers, fractions, decimals, all that good stuff. And negatives, I can do something negative, like I can do negative 4.7. I can do negatives in there. Oh. So what's the other side of the rectangle? Because that's where we are. Well, the other side of the rectangle is irrational numbers. Um, oh, sorry. Real numbers is R. That's the big circle we, uh, square we've been talking about. I keep calling these things a circle. It's a square. Um, so real numbers is R. It's encompassing all these things. So if you think somebody is rational, what's the opposite of rational? Irrational, right? Like language-wise, that's what we do. Uh, irrational numbers are numbers that can't be written in ratios. Um, and you know some of them. In fact, you know some of them very well. You know the number pi, <coughs> right? It is not 3.14. That's an approximation for pi. We use it a lot, but it's not 3.14. It goes on forever. Um, you have things like square root 2. If you put that in your calculator, it gives you a decimal expansion to the capacity of whatever your calculator will show you on the screen. But that's not the exact answer either, right? Things like that. You may or may not have encountered E. E is another one that you encounter. We will look at it at the very, like in chapter 13, at the very end of our semester as well. E is an irrational number. It has this non-repeating, non-terminating decimal form that continues. Um, irrational numbers do not have a symbol. Isn't that wonderful? Why didn't somebody just do I? I don't know. Um, one of the textbooks I use actually uses I, but that is not a conventional notation. What you see used is you see R minus Q. I know. So, so 
This is just saying the real numbers and take out the rational ones. Now, irrational is different than this sort of embedded square, you know, rectangle picture we have, though, right? Like natural numbers are rational numbers, but irrational numbers are completely separate. That's why we are removing them and leaving the other pieces. So we're going to pause to go back to look at the ones that we already did, and we're going to use, actually, I need, let me keep going. I need, it's not quite here yet. All right. We're going to keep going. We'll come back to those previous problems in a moment. OK, so this is our number system. You're very familiar with it. You've worked with all of these numbers to some degree, some of them more than others in the past. And so we're going to talk about cardinality. Cardinality, or the cardinal number, is simply the number of elements in a set. It's notated n and then the set name. Usually our set names are capital letters. They wouldn't have to be. They could be a word or something like that, too. Um, but this is an example of ones where we do have them. The set's name is A. Okay. So if I'm finding the cardinality, or I'm finding N of A, all I'm asking you to do is find how many items are in the set. That's what cardinality means. It means count them up. What is the cardinality? for the first set on number four? Seven. seven. Seven items in the set. That's not the set. The set is not seven, but n of the set, the number of items in the set is seven. Um, on number five, we have some gaps, right? It's missing some pieces. It might be helpful in those cases to write them out just so you don't count wrong. That would be fine, or at least to count them up on your hand or something like that. I'll write them out on the screen so that we're all on the same page. What kinds of numbers are these? Multiples of five. So I have 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, and 50. So written out, it becomes just a counting argument. How many did I write out? There are 10. Cardinality is a pretty straightforward concept. It's just counting how many objects are in the set. So we could talk about the cardinality of people living in my house right now. We could talk about the cardinality of the people in this classroom right now. You're just counting things. Just a fancy word for counting. A um, couple of ways to describe sets um, are finite versus infinite. So finite means the cardinal number for a set is a particular whole number. It could be big, right? It could be 10,246. Right? But it means that if you had long enough and wanted to, you could count it. It has a whole number defined to it. Infinite. Infinite is a set for which the number of elements is so large, it cannot be measured by a counting number. For example, if I asked you how many whole numbers are there, the answer is it's infinite. It's not a number. It doesn't stop, right? If you ever think that you're stopped, you can go one higher, All right, so our next two examples are to do just that, to decide if a set is finite or infinite. <clears throat> Number six, is it finite or is it infinite? Finite. finite. I could do the same thing I did in the last problem. I could fill in the dot, dot, dots, and I could count them up, right? Sure. So this one is finite. How about number seven? X is a natural number greater than 50. Infinite. It means I start at 50 and I go up forever. Now, if it said a natural number less than 50, that would be finite because natural numbers do have a starting spot, one, right? But they don't have an ending. So this one is infinite. Okay, the last bit here is going to talk about some, um, some symbols 
that we get to use. Um, it looks like an E that's curved, okay? Look carefully at that, right? That E means is an element of. All right, so I have three Chloe's in the class. Chloe is an element of Math 1033 Contemporary Math Section A, da da da, da right? One element. So that E means is an element of, and then uh, one of your you know, roommates who's not in the room right now would not be an element of our class. So they'd be the same symbol with a line slashed through it, just like if you did like a not equal sign, your straw slashed through. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill in each of these blanks with one of those two symbols. Is it an element or is it not an element? Number seven. It is, right? So we do the little curly E kind of thing. almost looks like a C with a line. Now, nine is tricky. Certainly, this number three is included over here in the threes, right? Okay. But what's different that makes you think something weird might be going on? It's got the curly braces around it, right? This is not an element at all. It's a set. It's a set with a three in it. And a set, by definition, is not an element because it's a set, right? It has a complete different identity than element. It has something in it that's an element, but it's not an element itself. So we draw a, you know, the element symbol with a slash through it because it's not an element. Now, if we didn't have the curly braces, if we removed those off of it, it would be an element, and that would be fine. So we're going to go back real quick, and we're going to write a couple of different things in to finish out those set notations from early on that we did, starting with problem number one. Right here where it said x is a whole number, there's a shorter way to write that. Okay? So I'm going to do that same yellow because it was the set notation x such that x, uh, wait, no, it was, I'll use the same one I did, 9 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 17. And instead of writing out the words x is a whole number, Another option is to write that x is an element of w. And that's shorter. It's quicker to write. That's really the appeal. We can do the same thing. Um, two is not a good example because we don't have, it says even, right? It doesn't say whole or whatever, so we'll skip over number two. But on number three, we can do it as well. Instead of saying x is rational, we can say x is an element of, what was rational, do you remember? Not r, that's real, close. Q. Q for quotient, yeah. x is an element of q. It's okay? So, it's not that one's right and one's wrong. There's just different ways of doing it, and they're, they're all equally right. Sometimes you'll see multiple choice inside of my math lab, so when you see these symbols, I want you to know what it's telling you so that you can pick the right one. Because if it doesn't write it out and it writes it in symbols, you need to know which one it's talking about. All right, last thing in this section, we're going to take a look at set equality. Set equality is set A is equal to a set B if, one, every element in A is an element of B, and two, every element of B is an element of A. We'll talk more about that later um, in terms of identifying those things. Um, but a pretty decent uh, sort of word picture or contextual picture that you're familiar with uh, might be something like this. If I were to say, um, Dr. Han's children, and my husband were to say Pastor Jeff's children, we would be talking about the exact same group of children. Right? But not all families work that way. Right? Sometimes there's yours, mine, and ours. And maybe you don't really identify that that child is really your child. Maybe you got married later in life or something like that. I don't know. Whatever the structure is. So, like, I have a brother-in-law, and if he were to talk about his children and his wife were to talk about her children, they're not talking about exactly the same group of children. There's some overlap, 
but they're not talking about the exact same group of children. All right, last thing, we're going to write true or false. <coughs> number six, uh, number 10, six. Is six an element of the set that follows? No. So this would be false. Number 11, <clears throat> x such that x is a natural number less than 3. So this is a verbal or a word description in the set builder notation, right? And then on the right-hand side, we have a listing method that says 1 and 2. Are those equal? Yes. So this one would be true. 